Alrighty, so the 2024 MLS regular season is now officially over. We have just crowned a new champion a couple days ago, and with the offseason pretty much underway, and we're going to have the expansion draft actually happening tomorrow for a San Diego FC, which I'll do a video about that, and also I'll do a News of the Week episode because there's already some transfer that has happened uh, in the first couple days of the offseason. Let's do an emotion index, uh, the final one of the 2024 season, and normally when I do an emotion index for the final time of the season, I basically ref like of how each of the fan base feel their team and how their their season has been some fan base will feel like it's been a season to remember some fan base will say that yeah it's been a good season we definitely have met expectation there are going to be some fan base that's kind of in the middle of the category where they said eh, it could be better but it can definitely be a lot lot worse in terms of how our season goes then you get to the category where you have fan base are just just definitely very frustrated about how their season turns out. It was way below their expectation uh, of their, their team heading into this season. And then you obviously don't want to be in this category in terms of, of fan base that are just, just thank God the fact that the season is over. It's been such a nightmare season that thank goodness it's all over and we have a fresh new start heading into next year. But with that being said, let us actually begin. We're gonna, and we're going to go alphabetically. Order starting with Atlanta United, and this one's pretty easy. I mean, Atlanta obviously is going to be right up there at the top, mainly because what a season it's been uh, for the Five Stripes. I mean, this is a team that you know throughout the the season they pretty much had a turnover in terms of not only the the, the roster but also in terms of the coaching and even uh, the the GM uh, as well, Carlos Bocanegra, which uh, which I'm pretty sure Atlanta fa fans when they found out that he finally. Got the axe. It almost felt like it's it's an MOS Cup kind of kind of moment. But really, the, the real MOS Cup moment for Atlanta United was them knocking off Inter Miami. I mean, the darlings of the league, a team that pretty much Don Gabbard and Apple T T TV CEO wants to to go all the way for the ratings. And Atlanta says, yeah, no, uh, we have other uh, ideas. And and in some way, they they were not 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 only uh treating this as an M MOS Cup win, but they they were the people team. Uh, this season a a as well in that game again against Inter Miami. Every uh, MOS neutral won Atlanta United t to win and beat de down the, the ult ultimate. Um, I mean, would I say, say Inter Miami is kind of a villainous team in the MOS world? I mean, obviously there's definitely a lot, a lot of haters out there in terms of Inter Miami, but certainly you can see the the, the, the general public in, in the MOS fan base really want Miami to be be eliminated because it's the funniest thing and that is exactly what happened. Now, obviously, I'm I'm pretty sure next season for Atlanta there's going to be more higher expectation and it, and in general in terms of the expectation, I, I think they kind of barely made it. I mean, it it, it was a bare bare well, uh a bare minimum for them to make it to the playoffs and they just about to do it. But consider how this season has gone, I, I think not only it's been been a successful season, but they can definitely build on that heading into next season as well. Now, looking at the next team, Austin. So while I said Atlanta had, had a season to remember, yeah, this was definitely not a season to remember for Austin. I mean, this was kind of a season where it's kind of almost like a microcosm of, of all the, the season that Austin has been been previously in MOS. There's been times this season we have seen the, the Austin of the second season, a team that somehow pull off miracle wins game in and game out, and a team that show a lot of resilience. And then we see some silly time where they were the bad Austin team, especially on the road of just getting completely outshot and just kind of bunker and hope that they can get a resort, which at times, of course, it works. And then we see the bad Austin teams um, where they, they just simply uh, don't don't have it in, in, enough uh, in terms of the quality and just, just being being getting run over both at home and on the road. So, yeah, it's been kind of a roller coaster ride of emotion but for the most part it's been a very frustrating roller coaster ride of emotion though again i uh, like what atlanta got their wish in terms of seeing their long time gm carlos broken get got the axe i'm pretty sure austin fans are pretty happy that they finally see see their their first ever head coach josh wolf getting the axe as well he's been, been one of the the most unpopular man uh in the los verdes fan base and now that they of course axe him it's kind of a new beginning at least for this austin team heading into next season now, moving on to Charlotte. Uh, yeah, for Charlotte, I think they definitely met expectation. I, I would say they're pretty close to being a season to remember. And I would say maybe 
in the middle of this is kind of like they, they exceed expectation. There's no doubt Charlotte has exceed expectation. I mean, coming into the season, everybody predicted them to finish near the bottom, considered the quality that they have. And, you know, for, for this season, you got to give a lot of cre credit of how not only they prove a lot of people wrong, but Dean Smith, I mean, you know, I, I know he, he's not going to get any coach of the year, year uh, candidate vote, but in terms of just kind of a dark horse kind of candidate in that award, you got to throw Dean Smith in. In that war, I mean, the way that he really motivated the the team, just kind of get the best out uh, of a team that you know on paper they, they should not be as good as they are uh, this season, but they got every every uh, he got every quality uh, of that team out, especially on the defensive end where they were just an absolute wall in the defensive end uh, throughout the season. Now they can just fix their their attack heading in next season and maybe be a little bit more ambitious in terms of signing. Or more attacking players because so far some of the attacking player that they have got hasn't really quite quite worked out uh so well but if they can do that and if the defense is going to be good again next next season as well this team could do get themselves back to where they are and that they they have no doubt that they they also want to win win a playoff series i mean you know i, I know know that they they did finally win their first playoff game against orlando city in game two but they still have not won a playoff series in, in their short time in mls now Heading into Chicago, yeah, for the fire, it's obviously over here. It's been here for the past decade, and so, I mean, if you ask any fire fan, it's almost feel like, thank God the season is over as se soon as the season isn't done, and then then they'll, they'll say that, well, next season is probably going to be the same, right? Now, obviously, with the way that heading into next season, you know, it's, a, it's now the Greg Berhalter era, and you just hope maybe, finally, this might be finally the time where the fire uh, can, can get themselves back. Back to where they were in the glory days in, in the beginning. Because, yeah, you talk about a team that has just not only been simply cursed, but literally become probably the worst team in the past decade or so. No team has been as bad as what the, the Chicago Fire has. And I, I even mentioned about the narrative and the, the cycle of the Chicago Fire, a team that always starts slow, but get hot in the middle of the season, give the fans hope, and then just completely crush their, their, their hope by the end of of October because they go on a massive skit in the latter part of the season when it matters and guess what happened this season yeah it is it's exactly the same thing and again you know I'm pretty sure fire fans want to hope that, that things would would turn out and you know for the sake of even just as a neutral I really wish the 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 fire their luck heading into next season I really hope want to see this team make it to the playoffs because it, it, it it's hard to believe that you know ever since this the this channel started focus on MLS. The Chicago Fire, I think, is the only team that I haven't even talked about them making the playoffs. I mean, I started covering back in 2018. 2017 was the last year that they, they made it. I think they're the only team to have yet to make the playoffs, and they are still the team that has the longest active uh, playoff drought out of any teams. Then we go to FC Cincinnati. Um, you know, I'm going to put them right here. Again, you know, when you look in the standings, you wouldn't expect the fact that Cincinnati would be at, at at where they are, but if you ask any Cincinnati fans, they, they would say that it's been a season below expectation, and it's been a frustrating season, mainly because, you know, this was supposed to be a team that's supposed to have a redemption year. After last year, uh, losing in the Eastern Conference Final and choking in the Eastern Conference Final spectacularly against Columbus, this was supposed to be the year that they redeemed themselves and, and, and go go back to, to where they were last year, but as we have seen before many times before, when you have kind of a redemption year, kind of a revenge year in, in some sort, it doesn't usually work out well, and for Cincinnati, the problem for, for, for them is that, you know, injuries have kind, kind of hurt, hurt the, this team as as well, the attack not as good as we, we saw saw last season, the same goes for uh, the, the defensive front, well, actually, I would say the attack was still pretty good, it's the defense that was a problem, and, and part of that is because they just had so many in, injuries that they had to, to deal deal with throughout the season, but yeah, just a season below expectation, not even getting past the first round, not even winning a silver uh wear as well. It's a very frustrating season for, for Pat Nolan's side. It feels like they've gone backwards compared to where they were were in the last two season when they were really heat uh, hitting the, the peak uh, of their power. Then we go to Colorado. Um you know for the Rackets, I'm gonna send them here. I mean I know the latter part of, of the season it didn't go so well uh, for the the Rapids, but I think if you ask any Rapids fan, consider the season that they had, and consider the expectation heading into this season. There, there was not a lot of expectation that this team was going to do well with some of the moves that they made, but give, give credit to the Rapids, and give credit to, to Chris Armas, too. He has really done a good good job. Again, the Rapids are kind of having almost a similar season to what we saw last year with Ben Olsen under 
the Houston Dynamo, a, 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 a team that nobody be believed that they were going to do well because they're under a heck coach that has not done done so well in previous job and kind of have that MLS 1.0 kind of mindset. But, you know, give credit to Chris Armour's team. This this was a very fun Rapids team uh, to, to see. Injuries obviously kind of, kind, of, kind of riddled them. And also reality kind of started to set in late in in the season uh, as well. But overall, you know, consider how... how 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 they have met their expectation of making the playoffs as a disastrous year that they had last year. And not to mention, I would say that if this was just based on Le Leeds Cup, I'm pretty sure Rapids fan will, uh, would f feel like they their team belong in that this category, and absolutely they should. I mean, I think if this was based on Leeds Cup, it would be a season to remember of how, how nobody would have thought the Colorado Rapids would be a team that made it all the way to the semifinal and even finished third place to uh, punch their ticket into the CONCACAF Champions Cup next season. Although, that being said, they're probably going to be the weakest MLS team heading into the CONCACAF Champions Cup uh, ne ne next season, um, if, if not not so. Uh, but now moving on. Uh, well, actually, I say say that, but there's actually another team that you could also say that might be pretty pretty weak. And maybe I'm just doing a little bit dishonest for, for the Rapids by saying that they are the weakest team but we'll get to that discussion once we talk about the CONCACAF Champions Cup but now we go to Columbus and you know for Columbus um oh boy I'm, I'm you know what I'm just gonna put them right here I know this might be higher than what what many Columbus fans feel like they they should be where it's kind of a season to remember mainly because you know they got knocked out in the first round it was a very surprising first round ex ex exit against the the, the Red Bulls, there was all that talks of, of them seems like they're going to repeat as champion. And this, again, just another reminder of how hard it is to repeat as MLS Cup champion. We have not seen a team repeat as champion since the Galaxy did it back in the early 2010s. And it's also going to be interesting to see heading into next se season where we maybe see a repeat consider the team that is the defending MLS Cup champion right now is the last team to, to go back to to back and repeat as champion but again it just kind of shows you it's very hard to do so and especially it's very hard to consider of all the competition that columbus has has been been going through i mean the fact that wilford nazi team with all the competition that they they've been through and with with the way that uh, that they've done very well in all those competition including winning the the leeds cup um a, as well i mean it, it's been a season to, to remember it's been a season that i have never seen an mls team juggle that many competition and still a able to to do do well by the end of the season. Now, obviously, that that game against the the Red Bulls, you know, again, maybe that was just kind of a sign that they ran out out of steam, but also just kind of kicks off the theme of this playoffs, which is the playoffs of, of the underdogs, especially in the Eastern Conference. But nevertheless, you know, if you ignore that, it's been a season to remember. It's another silverware that the Columbus Crew added into their their category with winning the the Leeds Cup this year. Now, moving on to DC United. Uh, for DC, I think they're going to be the first team that's kind of right in this category. And I think DC is kind of, kind of one of those teams that, 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 you know, I'm pretty sure their fan base would say that they're the definition of mid this season. It's been a very inconsistent season for Toilet Saints team. There's been times that they have shown flashes that they could do well. And then there's times where they show flashes of just, just not doing very 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 well what whatsoever especially you know they're a team that what's so frustrating about dc and i i think you could say maybe some dc fans would say they put in this category too is because you know what's so frustrating is that they're they're at one point we're we're leading the league in terms of the most point drop uh from a winning position this team always cannot play a full 90, 90 minute game and while some resort kind of gone against them you know there were some resort that they just can't fit, can't pull pull up of a, a full 90 minutes give up late late leads and, and draw points and so forth and when you have those kind of resort it's hard to try to make it to the playoffs we've seen many times when teams have that kind of problem more times than not those teams does not make it to the playoffs and for dc they came close to do so they would have got a resort against charlotte which not an easy task to do so even though they were uh playing playing at home Oh, uh, they would have been, been been maybe a little bit higher in this category because again the, the expectation for dc was very low heading into this i've Think they definitely made some progress but there's no doubt that that um you know they hope that christian ben ticket will have another golden boot season because he really carry that attack throughout the se season and the fact that that they hope the defense doesn't just 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 be very bad throughout the season as it was once again the case this year as well now uh moving on to dallas yeah for dallas it's got to be here it's been 
A frustrating season for Dallas fan, especially uh, with what it's promised it this year with the signings that they they made. It seems like they finally got got their attacking uh, pieces with Petr Musa be, being there. And even though I know their most important piece, Alan Velasco, was not available for most of the game, and when he did come back play, you know you can clearly see that there was a lot of rust uh, in in his game, and there's no doubt that I expect he could could have a bounce back. You're maybe even a, a candidate, early candidate for comeback player of the year at, as well. But yeah, um, it, it's what was frustrating about Dallas this season isn't actually the the, the attack. I mean, Pedro Musa actually did did very well, well, even though it kind of got off to a slow start for them. But what's frustrating about Dallas this season is just the defense. I mean, the defense just I don't know what happened to to this team. This team used to be be one of the best defensive team for the past couple of years, and then I mean, this season they just they just didn't look the same. Even Martin Paz, a guy that I've always said has been a very underrated goalkeeper, it's been a very very, very um, uh, disappointing season in his, his, his sta standard as well. And overall, you know, for Dallas fans, it's got to be frustrating because anytime when when you you feel like your attack finally got got going, then uh, the defense started to, to to go bad. But now now it seems like if the defense started to go good, then the struggle goes on, on the the attack attacking end. But yeah, we'll see how how this team is going to go, especially now that they they got a new head coach, another head coach coming from from the 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 Dallas kind of. Uh, system. They always like to hire a uh, head coach internally. We'll see whether or not if this team can get themselves back in the playoffs, which is, again, it, it's very rare to see in, in FC Dallas existing that they, they miss out on the, the playoffs, though they have ha had those kind of years late, lately, and it's got to be frustrating if you're a Dallas fan of when are they going to be... Are they starting now going into the same cycle as the New York Red Bulls of just not able to, 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 to get, get it done and even had years that just just simply they they're, they're just not good enough now moving on to the houston dynamo yeah i think i'm gonna put houston in the same category as dc i think you know if you're a dynamo fan just like dc fans if you ask them how the season is they they'll just say yeah it could be better but it it, it definitely could 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 be a, a lot worse it's been kind of a mid mid kind of season for the dynamo it's, it's also kind of a season where there have been times that they have been inconsistent there's signs that they've shown this season, where where they they look like the team la last year, making that surprise Western Conference final, no appearance. But then there's times where it, it's clear clear that that you know the 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 team team not making a lot of it uh, uh, signings and improvement heading in into the season really kind of hurts them. Again, you know we we know that every single season you need to keep making signings and need to keep improve because the, the league is going to continue to evolve. There's going to be teams that are going to be bad making some good signings and do do well and even if you're the good team you don't make the 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 right signing you you can definitely easily slide down to the top spot of, uh of your standings and i think that kind of is the case for the dynamo they didn't really make a lot of signing they they eventually did but then uh one of their 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 signing got got uh it got suffered a torn ACL injury and Ezio Ponce their other signing he's been kind of a little underwhelming in the beginning though again it is still early late days you you can't really judge a, a dp player especially a dp player that come from a, a, a another country tree uh so early there's more times than not we have always see see players that that gets off to a slow start to adjust the league but once they do adjust then they can look like the dp player that they they are so we'll see whether or not that's the case for ponce but for dynamo fans it's got to be very frustrating trading that you know this season it feels like it's a bit of a regression and then i think the other frustrating thing for dynamo fans is they didn't see their team win a lot at home this season the home form which has always been a strong point for this the this team um this year it's just it, it just, just um almost an outlier in terms of, of how this is probably one of the worst uh season that they have played at home compared to previous year then we go to sporting kc yeah, I think Sporting KC fans are definitely here where they, they're probably thanking that, yeah, thank goodness the, the season uh, is is over. And really, this season is kind of very similar to, to last season uh, as well, if you minus the fact that they had a crazy resurgence and get themselves into the playoffs. Uh, because, yeah, this season, pretty much throughout the whole whole season, it was like what we saw in the first 10 games of the season. It's been very uninspiring. It is pretty clear that Peter Vermees has, uh, has gone past his expiration. But obviously, I, I think Sporting KC fans are are, are 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 frustrated not only to the front office, but it feels like the front office doesn't really they quite quite care about now that they they will continue to reward Peter Ramis and in terms of his loyalty that is shown. And again, this is where if you're the the front office, 
you, you gotta make a big decision eventually. We we've seen before where long time head coach has been staying with it uh, a team, and you know it, it's good to to see a, a head coach that stay for a very long time and and, and has built a lot a lot of good loyalty and relationship uh, with the fans in front office. But when things are starting to go south, and especially it's gone south for Peter Ramiz for the past couple of years. Uh, it's time to finally make a change, and we'll see whether or not if that is the case. If not, yeah, I think Sporting KC fans might need to 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 think about about something similar to what we see other teams have have done when when it comes to maybe starting to make some protests in terms terms of uh, uh, of the frustration it's been of this team just just kind of been been sputtering for the past couple of years, and really uh for the past two seasons as well. If you you don't include the crazy resurgence that they had in the second half of the season uh then we go to the now mls cup champion and the, the defending mls cup champion the la galaxy so yeah this one's easy i mean anytime when you're the defending mls cup champion they're they're always going to be at at the top it's a season to remember and again talk about sporting kc maybe they they need to ask galaxy fans of how you know they can, can organize kind of a an a, a organized bro- uh, boy, boycott, especially from the supporter group, then somehow maybe things are going to turn around. I've, I've already mentioned before a, a decade long struggle for the Galaxy that led to to that boycott thought that we saw just a season ago, and who know who knew that, you know, once they did fi- finally fire their longtime president, Chris Klein, not only that fixed a ton of uh, a problem, but that literally fixed the problem for this team. I mean, this team, team ever since that, that moment, they have have been nothing but in an up, up projectile. They look like the Galaxy uh, off the old end. This is a team that, you know, with how good that they, they are in this current core that they have, I would not be surprised if the Galaxy are finally back, back of being a, a Penanio, uh top contender in the Western Conference. That might not be good news for the, for, for the rest of the Western Conference, and maybe not a great news for the rest of the league as well, because I'm pretty sure some fans remember how the Galaxy were dominating, how they, they get for a little tired of he- hearing that. But as I also so said before, I, I think... Uh, seeing the Galaxy as being one of the giant in MLS, seeing them being good, is definitely good, good uh, for for the the league, league itself. And that, yeah, this is a team that I would not be surprised surprised that that they might win a couple of more MLS Cup. And I would also not be surprised they might be the team that 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 finally become the first to to repeat as cha- champion uh, of MLS Cup in over a decade now. Then we go to their inner city rival LAFC. Um. I mean, I guess I'll say they're here mainly because one, they did sort of defeat that narrative of not able to get it done in cup cup final, and that narrative finally c- kind of came to an end against Sporting KC in the U.S. Open Cup. They won the U.S. Open Cup, their second trophy. Although, again, if you ask any LAFC fans and maybe even some 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 uh, general fans, they f- might put an asterisk in terms of that because one, they were literally not only heavy favorites in that game, but they were literally playing against. The, a team that was one of the worst team team uh, in the league in, in the the cup final, and they almost choked that game away. I mean, it was one one heading into extra time as well. And if it wasn't for those two goals, and they scored late, we could still be talking about the narrative again about LAFC not able to get it done in big games. And again, that narrative I think is gonna may may continue to stay even with that U.S. Open Cup game. I mean, just look at what we saw in in, in the game again against the the Sounders. Another big big game. Another Big moment for them to to uh, get themselves back to MOS Cup, and they they fell flat in 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 that that big game. I mean that's just kind of been the narrative of, of this team not able to get it get 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 it done. Besides that one one year where they were saved by by Gareth Bale, and and yeah, there's no doubt that uh, obviously while well, LAFC kind of met the expectation of sort of defeat that narrative and winning a trophy, it, it could have been a lot lot more in terms of how this season would have gone for for the Black and Gold. Now, uh, moving on to Miami, it's the same thing. Uh, I'm going to put Miami literally in the same category as LAFC. It's going to be pretty much the same thing I repeat about LAFC, where it absolutely could have been, been, been better uh, despite them uh, winning the Supporter Shield and winning the Silverware. Actually, I would say maybe Miami might be a little bit lo- lower than LAFC because, you know, Miami literally had had, had, had a MLS Cup or bus that kind of of aspiration and next year it's going to be the same thing uh, if you if you want me to to do an early early expectation kind of model for next year i would say miami is literally at the top of mls cup uh, or, or bus with all the talent that they had and with all all the money that they they spent and even have messi and friends and even have uh, the the league backing them 
this is a team team that should be winning more than just a supporter show. I mean, and it's not just the league that has been a failure. I mean, we saw in the CONCACAF Champions Cup, they were one of the favorites to win that, and they got knocked out in the Leeds Cup. Once again, favorites of repeating, even though they didn't have Messi, they got knocked out. And then in the, the playoff as well, when they have pretty much all of their, their best pieces back uh, and ready, and they don't get it past Atlanta United. I mean, I know Atlanta has been the team that's been kind of a, a bogey team for Miami lately, but that should be a team. That should be, be beating uh, Atlanta with the quality that they had compared to Atlanta. That should not be a discussion of them of the, them not moving on into the next round. So, yeah, there's no doubt that, again, for Miami, I, I'm only putting them in here mainly because at least they want, want some, some silverware. And let's not forget that they, of course have the most point in an MOS season, but it kind of doesn't really feel feel like that, especially the failure that they had in, in, in the, the fir first round off, off the playoffs. But I also wouldn't be surprised a lot of Miami fans will feel like they're right here, where not only they they they, they hit, hit below expectation, but what a wasted potential year. And, and if this is going to be the case next season as well, man, that's going to be... Uh, this team could, I mean, this team could still be be be, be good, but at the same time, there's going to be be some question that could could be asked when you're you're building kind of a super team and just unable to get 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 the job job done. Now moving on to Minnesota. Yep, Minnesota is going to be right here. It's been a season to remember, and again, you know what what a crazy year it's been uh, for for the Loons. I mean, as a Loons fan itself, what a emotional roller coaster of a year it's been this team started the season pretty much with no head coach and a gm that just came into the team didn't make a lot of signings uh and had the reynoso drama uh as well and to think that that we came out uh, of this and the fact that they had that disastrous run uh in the middle of the the, the season the fact that that team still made it to the, the playoffs and even win a play playoff game and have have some of the the key pieces that that uh, the front office have signed and actually decided to sign players in the summer. I mean, I, I didn't expect a lot in terms of the front office actually decided to make the so make some signings and make ch some cha changes that the the fan base has been demanding for, and it kind of worked out in in most part. Yeah, it's been a very 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 successful season. It's been a season to remember. They have exceed all expectation, and in many ways, I even said it. They're they're, they're way ahead of schedule of what I thought this is. This is supposed to be a, a rebuilding year and a trend transitional year for this Minnesota United team but the fact that they exceed that yeah they're, they're I'm very happy uh to, to see that now obviously the dangerous thing about heading into next season is that I hope there won't be some complacency in terms of the, this team there's no doubt that I think there could be more 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 signings that needs to make especially in in the defensive midfield role they need a DP number six bat, badly and maybe need a another defender a, a, as well but there's no no doubt, doubt that they, they are way ahead of schedule, and let's just hope maybe that, that will continue heading into next season where they could be on the cusp of, of being, once again, a contender like what we've seen before, which, again, I don't know if that's a kind of a good thing because anytime when Minnesota uh, are, are always talked about and they're considered to be a contender, yeah, they don't do really well. And I, I, and this doesn't just go with Minnesota United. That, this kind of goes for all Minnesota uh, sports team. Where Minnesota sports team always likes to be the – considered the underdog you don't want to be talked about because once they started to be talked about yeah that's when they start to, to to falter now uh moving on to montreal um yeah i think it's right here where you know it could be better and it could be worse i would say it's more leaning toward the could be worse category rather than the the could be be better mainly because you know for for, for montreal you know in at part of this season, it was kind of almost a disaster for a Lauren Courtois team. The, the team was not performing well whatsoever. It was kind of, kind of the struggling. And then something hit near the end of the season. Something finally worked out. Who would have thought that with them making the tra trade uh, for, for Caden Clark from, from Minnesota really sparked this team? And who would have also thought that Joseph Martinez seems like he found his, his old self late in the season? And yeah, this team started really get going uh got themselves uh into the playing round now obviously unfortunately they got they they lost in that playing round once again similar to what we saw in the COVID short year in 2020 but overall in a season where not only it's a it's a transitional year but also with all the chaos that's been been, been behind the scene as well the fact that this team still were able to make the the the, the playoffs despite all all the 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 bad bad uh kind of things that's happened all, off the the field and at times just had a disastrous uh, see, start. Uh, well, not disaster start season, but kind of in the middle way of the season. I think it's been a considered to be a successful season under Lauren Courtois. 
Now, uh, moving on to Nashville. Yeah, Nashville's obviously here. I mean, it's not a big surprise. This is easily the worst season for for Nashville SC, and you know their fa fans are, fans are, can can definitely tell you that not only in the standings as well, but it's just. I mean, this is a season, and I I think we kind of saw saw coming. If you ask any Nashville fans that. The last couple of years, it's almost the lady inevitable. The fact that the way that they've been been play, playing, really, you know, when they the same style that they've been playing, it what might have worked out in the the first season under Gary, Gary Smith because not a lot of team would expect that it would worked out. But the fact that they kind of continue to do that and don't really have a plan B uh, to do so, and not to mention the signings that they made has kind of gone a lot worse as the season goes along. Yeah, you get what we see right now for Nashville, and I, I even did a moving forward series talk about how. It doesn't seem like any things are going to get any better too because they're they're absolutely slammed uh, in in the cab. They don't really have a lot lot of flexibility to to make some some big move and and with the way that that the the front office haven't really been making some good moves late, lately. I mean, again, uh, Nashville fans are are, are going to start to be very frustrating and that all the goodwill that this team has made and all the good good stories that Nashville has done in the in their early part uh, of MLS, it could all all be be uh, uh undone if they they don't don't know not only get get the, their their salary cap situation uh under control but also things could, could could falter in these next couple of years now moving on to new england yeah same position i mean it's not surprised to see the refs and pretty much all refs are saying thank god the season is is over because yeah uh, it feels like the the Bruce Arena air, air the post Bruce Arena air for this New England team has hit this team hard, hard in a way that it's almost like they're going back to the to 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 the dark days that we, they've seen before. Uh, Bruce Bruce Arena, a team that were always considered to be near the bottom of the the standing under Brad Frito and stuff. What's very frustrating about the, this season is that while they did get some of their key player back back from injury, they just don't look the 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 same. And not to mention, speaking of injuries. Once again, they've been hit hit with the injury bug. Like I'll tell you what, I I'm convinced right now that you know the 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 soccer gods and the MOS gods they must not 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 like what what the New England Revolution did to to Bruce Arena and the and, and the the mystery that we still don't know what happened that that caused the resignation of Bruce Arena. That geez, they have simply cursed the scene with all these injuries that they they've been suffering throughout this season because it, it I mean they have been one of the most injury riddled team for the past. Uh, two season obviously it doesn't help the fact that they of course play play on turf and you know we can have this discussion in terms of whether or not if playing on turf means there's going to be be more injury and there are definitely stats that can can back that up as well but yeah i mean this team has just been so injury riddle and not to mention uh, under a head coach in kayla porter that unlike what i was talking about the the great success story of seeing these these kind of uh head coach i have a lot of experience that that actually really did well even though in their previous job they didn't do so well yeah you can't say that about Caleb Porter although if you look at the Caleb Porter um theorem usually he's kind of a head coach that you know in the first season it doesn't really quite work well but then the second season it, it kind of worked, worked very well I mean we saw it with Columbus getting that team to win MOS Cup we kind of even see it with the the Portland Timbers uh when he was coaching that team a decade ago able to get that team to an MOS Cup Cup win just a couple of years after so maybe that's kind of what new england thinking is i think that's kind of the reason why they they decided to to keep him because again this is a guy that he was a dead man walking uh in june the fact that he is still still as the head coach of new england i mean it's very surprising but again i think they're really banking on the fact that the, the narrative of caleb porter is you give him time he'll turn things around and this team can can, can get themselves back to a contender like they're supposed to be uh heading into this season uh, then we move on to the New York Red Bulls. Yeah, I mean, the New York Red Bulls is obviously here. I know the that so Metro narrative is not, still not, not uh, uh, broken, and the legacy of failure obviously continue for, for the, the Red Bulls. But considering this season, the fact that they, they, they were, were um, especially in the second half of the season of how bad they, they, they were, and the fact that they go on an unexpected cup final run like they did, did in this, this game, I mean, yeah, again, this this is something that I know Red Bulls fan will be very frustrated that they, they don't get the ultimate price. 
But the fact that they were not expected to, to be in this age. Like, if you would have told anyone that, that the Red Bulls would be a team that reached MOS Cup and would be the team representing the East heading into the beginning of the playoffs, nobody would have believed you. You could even ask any Red Bulls fan. They would think that that's a pipe dream. But, yeah, again, you know, as we said about the Eastern Conference this, this season, it, it just it feels like a, a big nuke just dropped on the Eastern Conference this, this uh, year, starting in the first round. Like, all the favorites were out. It was the season of of underdog and even in that final against the galaxy yes they look bad in the first uh 20 minutes or so but they grew into that game game as well and again if they would have uh, shown their clinical fi finishing they probably could have tied that game up against the galaxy but then again as i said in in the, the review of the mls cup that's been the problem for the, for the red bulls especially in in the second half of the season it hasn't really been as big of a problem in the playoffs except maybe game one against columbus but yeah, um, again, the, 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 there's going to be definitely a lot of what ifs in terms of the team. But in terms of the season itself and what Sandro Schwartz has done, he has already done something that pretty much uh, for the past 15 year, years, uh, Red Bulls team have not done, done which is uh, win the Eastern Conference and reach MLS Cup once again. Now, moving on to their inner city rival, NYCFC. Uh, yeah, I think they're definitely right here where... It can definitely be better, and it can definitely be a lot worse. And depending on who you ask, some NYCFC fans would lean toward that it could definitely be better, consider, consider they have some good good run of form at, uh, heading into the playoffs. But there are going to be some that will say, say that it could be a lot lot worse, consider. You know, this season for NYCFC, it's been very inconsistent. Uh, and, and that's kind of expected when you have a young team like NYCFC uh, with a lot of young guys out there. You're going to have some uh, inconsistent uh, showing throughout the the season, but ultimately they weren't able to to make it back back to MOS Cup. I mean, I, I know some NYCFC fans have that expectation of this team to go deep, but I feel like that's a little bit of an unrealistic expectation, consider of how young the the team is and the pressure that that Nick Cushing has been been under. It kind of fought, finally tell the 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 tale as well. And again, I, I think also uh, I think some NYCFC fans will have the negative saying that it's been a very frustrating season mainly because again they lost to their biggest rock but win the playoffs that 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 has to hurt hurt uh in, in more ways or not i mean it kind of didn't really hurt that that much when they saw their their biggest rival eventually falter once again and they can continue to say that they're the only new york team to win an mls cup but still yeah that 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 uh hudson river derby playoff loss that one's gonna gonna sting but there's definitely some promise. Again, if these young guys that they, they have, which I think these young guys have done pretty pretty well, uh, considering the inexperience they have, if they can continue to grow, this team can definitely get themselves back in the conversation of the top top of the standing. And that's kind of always the expectation that this NYCFC fans have, have had. But we'll see who, of course, is going to be their new head coach as well. Now, uh, we go to Orlando City. Um... You know, for Orlando, I'm gonna put them here, kind of right near where Colorado is. Where again, it, it's it, it it's similar to Colorado, where maybe some Rapids fan might be greedy and say, "Oh, they could have done much be better." Better, I think they're kind of a team that 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 peaked a little bit too too early. I wouldn't say Orlando City is kind of that 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 team. They they look look pretty pretty well, especially in the second half of the season. And I mentioned before, it's pretty much all, this season has been almost identical to what we saw last season. They kind of got hot at the right moment. But I think for Orlando City fans, I, I wouldn't blame them thinking that it, it could absolutely be a lot better. And especially, it just feels like it's a it's a season of missed opportunity with the way that, as I mentioned, the Eastern Conference is being very very weak, and that you know the Red Red Bulls, the team that they face in in the final, that's definitely a beatable whole team, especially the quality that Orlando City has had and unable to do 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 so, and the fact that they also had that lack of goal scoring, uh, in in the the playoffs. Yeah, again, it, 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 they'll, they'll feel, feel like this is a missed opportunity, even though I think they definitely met, met the expectation of not only going deeper than they ever been, been before, but but also, once again, look look really good uh, and, and playing very good soccer, especially under Oscar Perret in the second half of the season. Now, again, uh, I think the ultimate ultimatum is that Orlando City fans will feel like it's a missed opportunity, especially with the... Way, how, how weak the East is by the time we, when we get to the conference semifinal in the conference final, and that they've also said that they might not get a better chance to win MOS Cup, especially with all those good teams in the East are going to reload, and they're going to get themselves back to, to con content, uh, contenders. Now, uh, moving on to Philly. 
Soviet Union, yeah, it's been right here where it's no doubt it's been a it's been a frustrating season. They've been been below expectation, and uh, again, you know, for the for the Union, I, I'm not sure did I did a movie for a series about them yet. I might have done so, but yeah, there's a lot of question about this U Union team in, in the the future, especially you know firing Jim Kern. That was definitely a very surprising move. I definitely didn't see that that coming, even though you know the Union has probably the worst season that Jim Kern had has had i don't think jim kern was the the problem uh the problem for mainly for this team is that when you basically run it back for so many times and I, i've said before when you decided to to be stagnated and and don't really improve your roster it's gonna come it's gonna ca caught up to you and i think it, it finally caught up to the union especially their d defense too i mean their defense completely regressed this this year year i i don't know what hap happened to, to that 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 back line that was was considered to be be one of the better better Backline in the past couple of years just completely regressed, and now again heading into this off season, I mentioned they might need to go through a teardown. I don't know if they're gonna do do that. I I think maybe they they feel like last season was kind of an anomaly, but again, you know, uh, if that was the case, then why did they decide to get rid of Jim Kern and why they they already started to sell off some some key pieces is that uh, as well, even though. Again, it's kind of an interesting task. It's kind of almost like they are sort of tearing it down, but then they kind of also are armed by by saying that maybe we're just going to keep keep some of the key players and hope the next next coach, uh, head coach will get the the best of the team and get this team back to to an MOS Cup con contender. Uh, but moving on to the Portland Timbers and also just to talk about the the Union itself. They're also hoping that the academy will produce, which that that could definitely be worked out because they still do have the best academy in. In MLS and especially with the young talent of Caven Solvent, I, I can't wait to see see him getting more more minutes and playing along with with his brother as well. I mean, you you've seen all the, the good brother tantrum in this league as well. I can't wait to see the Solvent brother tantrum heading into the next season as well. Uh, once if Kevin Solvent is gonna get some more minutes. Now, uh, moving on to the Timbers. Yeah, again, the Portland Timbers. It's kind of like right here, where again it could be a better in terms of how this season has gone especially at times this season the the timbers had looked like they're back to being at their best and then it could be a lot worse especially in the beginning of the year year where oh my goodness in the beginning of the year it, it was bad like it, it was pretty bad of how especially how that def defense is and I, I i'm pretty sure in the beginning of the year maybe we even hear some whisper that timbers fan want phil neville to be be, be accessed uh well but in a way again it's been kind of inconsistent since season ultimately um they they weren't able able to uh, make it to to the playoffs as as a resort sort of that or actually did they make it to the playoffs? Let me let me look at the standing. Uh, this is I I, I should know this, but I, I think they um uh did they make it to the playoffs? Uh yes they did they didn't make it to the playoffs but they they got absolutely smacked uh by Vancouver. How did I not forget about that that game that five nothing abomination? Easily the worst game that the the Portland Timbers have have played. Uh, throughout the season, and maybe really one of the worst game that they ever play at Providence Park as well. Yeah, I just kind of feel like it's it's kind of that empty fe feeling of oh, this season could have definitely gone gone a lot lot better if they fix that defensive issue, and that's literally going to be the number one target. Like if they do not fix their defensive issue, which I'm shocked the fact that this team hasn't been considered that's been a liability for this team for the past couple of years. Uh, this team could be be back in the same situation next season as well. Now, looking at RSL, yeah, for RSL, it's kind of like right here where, again, you know, it's kind of kind of border in terms of also could be better, it could be worse, but it all if you ask most RSL fans, they would say that it's been a frustrating season. Again, this is a team that I think is a key example of a team that peaked too, too soon. I think RSL kind of peaked too soon with them being very good in the beginning of the year and looked absolutely unstoppable in the West and looked like an MOS Cup contender, and then it just kind of fell, fell apart uh in in the middle of the the season and again you know i don't know how how it of course fall apart i think maybe the main reason why it fall apart is the sale of, uh, of uh, andres gomez i mean andres gomez was, was was a catalyst in terms of of the attack and i get it yes you know the money is definitely there and you all obviously want to sell players uh for profit that's what's the the goal of this league but again the, the balancing act is definitely there, especially when you do it in the middle of the summer, it can really disrupt the the rhythm of the team, and I think that sale really just disrupt the 
the the the team and really the attack just never looks the same and not to mention we will never know how in the world did chicho rongo just completely fall off the face of, of the map after that suspension i don't know what he did doing that suspension or before uh that suspension as well but he just does not look like the same chicho rongo from the beginning of the the year i mean he, he, he it, it was quite crazy to see how how, how big of a fall off it is and and not to mention there's even the the talk of, of the la lack of la lack of um la the the lack of effort too with with him uh, near the end of the season as well it got so bad that he actually got 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 bench in in game number two uh in that game against Minnesota that's when you know things are are bad and even when he came off the bench he didn't look like he really cared a, a itself and that that is definitely alarming if you're your RSL consider again. I just don't know what happened. He, he's going to be one of the cases where, we, where I mean, I have seen this before where a player can perform well and just completely fall off the map uh, as the season goes along. He's another exa example of it. We, we, we'll never know what he did in uh, before that suspect. Well, we know what he did in that sus that caused him the suspension, but what it, whatever he did after the suspension as well, something has gone, really got, gone to his head to a point where he just does not look like the same player as we we saw in the beginning of the year. Then we look at the San Jose Earthquakes. Yeah, this one I don't even need to explain. I mean, it's obvious that they're they're right here. Thank God the season is over. Thank goodness that Bruce Arena, of course, is hoped to rescue uh, this team. Although, again, I don't know if that will, will help, considering we know who is, is still the owner of this team, and he's going to be a guy that will help this team back no matter uh, what kind of coaches it is. But there's no doubt that at least, you know, with Bruce Arena, it seems like he's been at least kind of successful for the most part that he's done. At least he can get the 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 Quakes team team to some some uh, success. I mean, I don't even expect them to to reach MOS Cup. Just get this team back in the playoffs. Just get this team a a home playoff game. Like all I'm begging for the Quakes next season is the fact that you know when I look at the the roster, this team can definitely uh, get themselves back to playoff expectation. I think there was a lot underachieved uh, this season as well. No doubt, Bruce Arena, uh, a good head coach like that, will really iron the the things out but all i'm just asking is just a home playoff game it is hard to believe that the quakes have not played a home playoff game in 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 over a decade and ever since the opening of paypal park they have not not yet host a playoff game i think that is the longest period that i've seen any team right now in mos to not host a, a home playoff game itself that's all i'm asking about this team next season I, I i'm and hopefully it will be the case i mean if they lose in that home playoff game fine but I just want a home playoff game. I just want to go to 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 a Quakes game where there's actually energy. I think the closest I felt like it was a playoff game was the game against Austin last year as well. I mean, they made it to the playoffs, even uh, though it kind of was a little undeserved with them getting a a, a one one draw against one of the worst team in in the league. But that felt felt the closest to a playoff uh, at atmosphere at PayPal Park, and I, I want that that, and I'm really hoping that that might be the uh, the case and. And we'll see if that is. Then we look at Seattle. Um, for the Sounders, I think they met expectation. I mean, I know Sounders fan might not not agree with me, but I, I think considered the season that they 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 ha had. I mean, yes, ultimately they did did lose in the Western Co Conference Final against the the Galaxy. But remember, they they play a really good game against the the Galaxy. They just made that one one bad mistake that kind of cost them. But overall, you know, this Sounders team, they, they had a really good good season. Really, as the season go, goes along, they started to, to kind of play the Sounders team that is just a team that, that is really hard to, to, to break down and a team that is tough to to uh, to try to break down. And, you know, we saw a lot of team, even some of the best uh, attacking team like the Galaxy had a lot of trouble against the Sounders defense. And now that, you know, if they're starting to, to maybe spend some money, if that is the case for the Sounders team, because that's been something that has been, been la lacking and some of the signings that they, they made has been kind of baffling. How much do they miss Garv Lagerwey right now? I mean, they, they must really miss Garv Lagerwey because their current current uh, sporting director, Craig Wabel, definitely has not been it uh, for, for this team. Uh, but there's no, no doubt that if they get, do get those, those moves right again, yeah, this is going to be a team that could could be be once again competing in in the West. And again, like what I said about the Galaxy, I don't think any Western Conference team wants Seattle to 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 once again be success. I mean, they're kind of tired of seeing Seattle being so dominant uh, for for a decade now. 
and, and to see them look like they're getting themselves back in, in a good way, yeah, that might not be a great news. Though it could be good news in terms of the league itself because anytime when you see some good team have, have um, get themselves back to where they are, it can definitely draw the, the, the view, viewership and the ratings that the league, of course, want to see. Then we go to St. Louis. Yeah, uh, for St. Louis, obviously it's below expectation. But I would also say that it's kind of get, gets to the category of could be 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 worse as well consider again this is a, a team that after that disastrous season that that or disastrous start to the season that they had once they fired bradley carnell they, they definitely got better and again i I'm, i've already said this so many times about the st louis side and i'm pretty sure their fans fans have already heard this me saying this a lot if they just make those signings a little early if they just make those summer signing that really really turns out to 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 really give the boost for the st louis team as the season goes along this team would have been a playoff playoff team as we speak but until then i think st louis fans will be oh they they they're definitely excited of how next season is going to be although again i think maybe one one thing that they are a little concerned is that they did hire a head head coach uh from from the swedish league and the last time when we saw a, a guy that came from the swedish league uh a head coach that came from the swedish league yeah that was Mick, michael starhey for 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 the quakes that season did not end up well. It ended up being one of the worst season in MOS, and I, I don't, I don't think that's going to be the case at least for St. Louis. But again, that's a bit of a risk in terms of them hiring a, a, a head coach that you know don't have any experience in in, in MOS, and you know it's kind of very unproven unpro uh, uh, heading into next season as well. Then we go to Toronto. Um, you know I'm going to put Toronto here, even though theoretically they kind of need. Toronto fans would say that they should be here, that thank God the, the season is over. And not to mention the future is definitely very bleak for this TFC team once again because uh, uh, John Herman decided to, to resign and you still don't know know what you're going to do with the two Italians, whether you, you, you're you going to get rid of them. And, and you know, they obviously can't, can't, uh, can't uh, decide to let them go because of the contract situation unless they exercise a contract buy buy out uh which i don't know if they they do have but overall in terms of the season i've said before i, I think there is definitely some pro progress that is made in terms of some of the resort they definitely weren't the doormat as what we saw last season and they they definitely get uh give it a go in ter terms of at least trying to make it to the playoffs but again what will be very frustrating about this season is that they were in the playoff position for most of the year and falter at the the, the worst point possible moment and then again as i mentioned with john herman departing and how uh, i think uh, he's another example of a coach that really got the best out of of the team now they're back at square square one again and 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 we'll see whether or not if they can make a move that is so that can be be similar to bring in a good head coach like john herman then we finally move to the vancouver whitecaps um yeah i'm gonna put them right here where you know it could be better it could be worse Mainly because again, it's another year where the Vancouver Whitecaps uh, got knocked out in the, the the first round, and I think the the, the front office are kind of getting tired of that, so they decided to let go uh, of Vanny Sartini. Even though, again, that's another one of those ones that I'm a little bit surprised that they decided to let him go. Um, but again, you know, for the for the White Whitecaps team, there this has always been a team that I think is going to be stuck in this category for a bit where they always felt like they're just kind of one piece away of de be being a, a decent uh contender and we, we kind of saw it this season as well i mean this season was kind of weird for for Vanny sartini team is that they kind of got off to a good start to this season and then it kind of falter as the season goes along it's kind of almost the opposite of what we saw last year as well but at least the good news were if you're a white cast fan is once again you won the canadian championship you're back in the concap champ champions cup although you know again them and Sporting KC and Colorado might be the weaker team heading in to the CONCACAF Champions Cup. And not to mention, they probably is going to get a really tough draw in a top-tier Liga MX team. As you, that's kind of the reward of winning the Canadian Championship uh, that that is. And not to mention, they also won a playoff uh, game as well. That's been very rare for this Whitecaps scene. They haven't won a lot of play, playoff games, but they, they, they put up probably one of the best playoff performances we've ever seen the Whitecaps have with a 5 nothing thrashing against the Timbers. Yeah, again, I I think think um you could say that they they have sort of met met expectation, even though again the goal of the expectation is them to get further than the 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 fir first round, which obviously they weren't able to do so. And now there's the question of well, is the next head coach that's going to lead this team is going to do better? And most importantly, can they get that that 
that uh that key piece to really drive for it and at least kind of help out ryan goal and brian white in the attacking end because you know those two they are a very dynamic player but i do feel like they need one more pieces to, to complement them and at least take the pressure off of them as well but there you have it that is pretty much it for the emotion index for this this uh year this is of course the last one as i mentioned in the beginning of the video let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video and let me know in the comments below did i put some team a little bit too high or a little too low in the emotion index but as always hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time